I want to take just a few minutes, uh, if you don't mind. I'd love to get a reaction or response from you. I've got some questions there that I posed at the bottom of this. Uh, question one talks about what good life nots you tend to chase after. I mean, what that natural man, they think that's where the action's at, but we, I think we proved today that's not where the action's at. And then, and then the second question, how are you experiencing the glorified life right now? How, how are you experiencing that? Yeah, I know me. Yeah, I know me. You, and, God, how would you describe your relationship with God? So anyway, uh, give, me, give me your thoughts and reactions. You can answer any one of those questions and uh, love to hear from you guys. Uh, I met a man in Wichita when I, when I was there at work and uh, he was a big customer. And uh, kind of a big boy around the around the area, and he made a comment. He said, "I don't have a lot of friends, but I got a lot of acquaintances." <laughs> and and that's so typical of, of I'll call them the big boys, uh, some the CEOs or whatever. Some of the guys that chase uh, everything but God, and uh, it just so points out that friendship is a lot better than acquaintances. And, uh, you know, it's easy to fall into that other, you know, you kind of connect and network and, and all that. Those are acquaintances. They're not friends. And, uh, that's, that's just a great point. Hey, Rod, uh, great message. I, th your whole, this whole series has been fantastic. So thank you for the time you put into this. Um, question number two, says, are you experiencing the glorified life right now? Um, where are you coming up short? I know for me, and this, this was come a couple of weeks ago. I know our church did a revival service. Um, but really the part that really impacted me is every day it's, I've got to die to self. Uh, it's that crucified life. Cause my, my flesh wants to, wants to direct, wants to lead. And so I've got to die to that every single day. Um, so I can allow the Holy spirit I want the fruit to be, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. I want those to be um, my response um, every day uh, in my marriage, parenting, work, what have you. So for me, it's, it's, I've got to, I've got to verbalize that. I've got to make sure I'm uh, in the process of doing that every day. Otherwise um, I can succumb to my flesh being re responding when I don't want it to. So um, anyway, for me, that's where I'm at um, every day in my walk. So. Thanks Scott for your vulnerability there. Rod, I have to admit that uh, I discover a little more every day that my greatest threat and my greatest enemy is myself. Uh, just trying to focus on the things that, that God's trying to build into my life and not get distracted. Uh, it's just, I worry about battling myself more than I worry about anything out in the world. So Scott, I'm, I'm with you in that one, buddy. Yeah, this is something we hear consistently at our church. Our greatest enemy is, is me. <laughs> it's we, <laughs> you know, it's like the enemy and it's, it's, it, 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 that's, that's the one right here. Look in the mirror. Uh, so thank you, Byron, for that. Anybody else? Rod, good morning. Good morning thank you. Thank you so much for this today. I think you've got a new book here with this series. <laughs> it, it, it's more than a book. Mm. It's more than just words. It's that, it's the relationship. As you mentioned, first of all, it's the good life is, is not about any of those things. Hey, I got a, a master's degree in many of the things that you talk about the good life. They mean nothing. There's nothing. Unless you have those relationships, I've said to many guys, if you get one true friend in your life, you are unbelievably rich. And I know what it's like to have lots and lots of acquaintances. And I have one true friend. He used to be a client, but became a very good friend. When I was going through my divorce, he called me every single morning to check that I was okay. Mm. It, it's just, it, at that time, it was remarkable because 
I'd only been a follower of Christ for a very short time when that happened. I didn't know. I didn't understand. But now I've, I've just passed my 20th anniversary of being welcomed into the world of God. And it's just, what a difference. What a difference. And all these things you've talked about are so, so true. Mm. I have got the master's degree. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. And it is, yes. I think it's a new book. And boy, do guys need it. Well, like I said, I'm learning more than anybody, Mike. So I'm I'm the recipient of of uh, just finding truth here, finding truth, and it makes sense. And 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 I again, I, I I've said this multiple times over the last thirty minutes, but I mean, secular research validates what the Bible says. I mean, that's what's the irony of this. And they see it, but they can't see it. Mm -hmm. They hear it, but they can't hear it mm -hmm. uh, because because it comes down to a decision to. Uh, like Scott said, to live a crucified life. They don't want to live a crucified life. Mm. They don't want to die to self. Mm. And, and they can see it, and it all makes sense. But, man, I think I'll go down that, that self-made man path. I'll go down that image path, and I'll let the world tell me what's going on. And guess what? You know, it, it's it's got to be incredibly frustrating for people to think, you know, Man, is this is is this it? Is this where happiness comes? And what I've told people in the past, you guys heard me share this illustration. You know, they're they're leaning their ladder against this building of success, and they're climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. And they get to the top rung, and they realize my ladder's leaning against the wrong building. I'm not happy, but that's what the world says. Just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and going and achieving and just a little bit more, just a little bit more, a little bit more and this trophy and this prize and this compensation package and this, you know, title. And it doesn't satisfy. It's not the good life guys. It's close friends. It's a healthy marriage. It's controlling the, the, uh, the addictive habits we're all susceptible to. And it's having a faith, but again, it's not just a faith. It's the faith, <laughs> faith in Jesus. So anyway, just, just regave the message here, but any other thoughts, any other reaction to this? A couple of things, <clears throat> Rod. First is um, we need to believe what the Bible says. The best, um, maybe the illustration that I ever heard of that was in a discussion of, of whether or not it's arrogant to believe John 14, 6, that Jesus is the only way. One of, one of our church members said that, for him, it's not arrogant to read the Bible and believe what it says. And I, that was that was over 10 years ago when that happened, and that still sticks in my mind. And uh, as another quickie, and it, this is, I heard the difference, the grace and mercy distinction, putting sort of a humorous way. Uh, the difference between grace and mercy is uh, mercy is getting what we don't, what we just, what we don't deserve and and great and mer great mercy is not getting what we do deserve. Um, the final thing is that we've, my wife and I have had really, really close friends, eight couples and a, and a few more, but the eight couples of us met and became Christian friends, close Christian friends in the mid seventies. And we're still caring for each other today through <clears throat> the birth of children, the, uh, and all the things that happened in 40 years to, to couples. And, and, and last year was the first uh, one of the husbands died. And another one of the husbands was recently di diagnosed with blood cancer. Another one of the hus husbands um, seven years ago had quadruple bypass surgery and two days later had a massive stroke. And he's still, he's still hanging in there. He's still alive and, and witnesses to us, even though he can't speak very well every day every time and so those those friends are priceless and uh and I'm, i've been so blessed by god to have those friends over the years hey larry can you uh, yeah there is I, I actually um looked up this difference between grace and mercy yesterday and you did a yeah. nice job can you say that again so our guys get that because 
they are two radically different statements. They are, yeah. They grace is things. grace is not as getting something we don't deserve. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve. That's right. Such such good, and we need it's, both. It's fun. It's funny, but it's but it has a, a radical truth behind it. Yep. Yep. So good. Thank you for sharing that. All right, gents, we'll say goodbye. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, we'll see some of you tomorrow. Hey, remember two weeks out, we're going to have a 20th anniversary celebration breakfast at uh, provided by Neighbor <laughs> Cafe right there in Lee Summit. 20 uh, year birthday party. The next day is our golf tournament. So we got a lot of things going on coming up. Uh, Wings for Water event this week. And uh, love you guys so much. Glad you're part. Chris, a real, a real quickie, Rod. What number was this uh, talk? Uh, I think it's number 10. Uh, I believe it's number 10. And I did map out. I am going to finish by the end of the calendar year. Uh, you know, I, I snuck in a couple. <laughs> uh, there was, I think, I think uh, 14 in total. So I've got, uh, I think, four left to do. And uh, yeah, just, just a really, really enjoyed these uh, again thanks thanks mike for your encouragement today it, but it's been it's been a great journey for me so great journey for me all right gents god bless you thanks rod